Well, alrighty. So this is what we have going on in today's video. When we left off in the last video, we ended up getting this truck completely finished up. And if you recall, we had a little bit of an oil leak and it was coming out of the oil filter. I had suspected I was gonna maybe have a problem with that. When I painted this, I painted that valve body assembly minus the filter on there. Uh, I painted it without the filter on it. I taped up where the filter went. However, I noticed that there was a little bit of paint up in the lip of that filter housing. You can kind of see right about where I'm pointing with the flashlight, there's a little bit of paint on the filter. And I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see it or not, but right about where that drip is coming from on the left side of that filter housing, there is paint. So there's paint up against that gasket, the O-ring. So we're gonna pull that out, take a little propane torch, heat that up ever so gently to get that paint to melt away from there. But before we're gonna get into doing that, we're just gonna let that drip for a while. What we're gonna do now is we are going to put these extension hubs on the 9620. Uh, we'll get into that here in a second, but I ended up having to buy these for this tractor because they weren't furnished with the tractor. That's a story uh, that we'll get into here in a moment. What I found was three of them that were new old stock and one of them that is uh, used. Those hubs are 1200 and some dollars brand new and I got them for about half of that. So Andrew's gonna go ahead and bring that 9620 in here. We're gonna pull the duels off one at a time and we're going to put them extension hubs on there and uh, put the dual back on. Uh, when I bought this tractor, I went down to look at it. Well, first off, the tractor was listed. In the picture, there was no duals on it. So I asked the dealer that was selling it, I said, does the tractor come with duals? They said, yep, it comes with duals. So I looked at it but wanted to see the duels and I said where are the extension hubs they said we don't it doesn't take extension hubs I said well I think it does but I looked at the the rim and it looked like the dual rim was dished out farther than the 800s that are on the 9560 uh, so I figured, well, maybe, maybe that's just dished that way. And as you can see, we're getting some snow here. Spitting snow with the rain. So we got the 8560, or the 9560 rather, is right across the road. That has 838s on it. This tractor has 846s. So it's got a taller rim. They call them... Goodyear LSW, which stands for low sidewall. Mm -hmm. So um, we ended up having to get the hubs and I have yet to get the money out of the dealer for them. At some point, sometime, when this tractor had been moved from one spot to another, it uh somebody left the hubs behind on it now another thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding more weight to this tractor if you recall when we bought this tractor it had no weight on it we had removed the inner wheels we've got weight cast weights on the inner wheel we've got 1440s on the inner of all four inner wheels and we ran this across the scale we were at like 31,000 some odd pounds on the front end and we were about 14,000 something on the rear 
So we're not adding any more weight to the front. We've got the silage blade frame on there. That, if I recall, was like 2,000 pounds or 2,500 pounds. We've got enough weight up front. We probably don't need the weights that we put in the front wheels up front. However, we need to add quite a bit more to the rear. What we have on the rear is we have a starter on the outer side of the inner wheel. And then we've got three. Did we put three or did we have two? We have three. Did we have three or did we have two? I think we got two. We'll, we'll know more once we get that off in there. Uh, we're going to add one more. Oh, what the heck are those? What are those big ones? 450s? I think they're 450s. We're going to be able to add one more to the inner one, then we're going to add a starter and two or three to the outside, whatever we can get on this outside. But we are still going to be too light with this tractor. Now, I got a guy that's claiming that he is a tractor expert out west, and he is frowning upon us putting all of this weight on this tractor. I don't know if he is who he claims he is or if he dreams of who he is. But if anybody that has been in the tractor world, you know that if you have horsepower, you need an adequate amount of weight to back up that horsepower. We are still going to be too light. We are in the neighborhood of like 62 or 64,000 pounds once we get all this weight added. This tractor is 620 horsepower. They claim, the tire experts, the tractor actual experts, not the ones that claim to be experts, but the actual experts, the guys that know how to ballast a piece of equipment. They know and they'll tell you that you need 110 pounds. I thought it was 100. I actually clarified this with my tire guy. Uh, not only is he an expert in tires, but he also has guys in his field that are experts that feed him the numbers as well. And when they upfit a tractor with new rubber, whether it's their upsizing in rubber or whatever, they tell you you need 110 pounds of weight, of actual weight, per horsepower. 110 pounds, well, 110 pounds per horsepower at 620 horse. If I remember my math correctly, I believe that's 68,000 pounds. That is, that is 68,200 pounds. So we're still going to be under ballasted. Other guys will say add water. Well, the trouble with adding water is, for one, if a guy doesn't know it and he goes to take one of these duels off and he's got 2,000 pounds of extra weight in there, if he's manhandling it, he can get hurt. The other problem with adding liquid bias or liquid to the tires for weight, when I was this guy's age, all of our tractors were loaded with, with water in the tires. Yes, it cost money to add the cast. This used cast was about a dollar per pound used. I painted it, it looks like new. You buy it, First, you buy that weight first, it costs a lot of money, but through the course or the life of the tractor, you will by far pay more with screwing around with liquid in your tires. You're going to replace them tires at a minimum of 3,000 hours. You might be able to go five or 6,000 hours, so you're going to have a couple of tire changes from going from old to new tires. You're going to have to pump that liquid ballast out of the tire. It's going to take the tire guy more time to fix the tire. In the event that you 
lose all of your fluid, you're going to have to buy that again to add to that tire. Uh, if you're on a bunk silo or whatever and it's leaking into your bunk silo, that, that can't be too good for the cow feed. Um, it's just a, a real pain dealing with the liquid and a lot of guys have gotten away from it just for that reason. There's other products that you can use. Um, natural products that don't freeze and that um, are as corrosive. That's the other thing with, with calcium chloride that they put in these tires, they rotted rims out. So you're buying rims on a tractor if you keep it for 20 years, you might have to replace a rim or two. Uh, you run into that issue. So, getting back to the weight issue, we're, or we're actually gonna walk away from the weight issue. We don't need to talk about that anymore. This tractor is still going to be too light. After we get done with this video, if it stops raining, I want to talk about the reason why we went with a grouser blade opposed to uh, Degelman. We have, what do we got? Three Degelman blades? Three yeah, we got three Dinglemans. And we'll explain at the end of the video here why we chose a Grouser over a Dingleman. Degelman. <laughs> uh, another thing that we had done with this tractor too, this tractor, um, I don't think they ever really had the duels on here. Our tire guy came and he moved the tires that were on the duels. He switched them with the inner tires. And you'll see these inner tires, maybe you can't see it too good there. But you'll see that these inner tires have got a lot more rubber on them than the uh, duels. Were wore down a little bit from here to here. And as you can see, we got a lot more bar there. Uh, this tractor also had a um, new tire. They screwed up a rim. Uh, subsequently, I think what happened is they hit something with it and they broke the rim and ruined the tire. So it's got a new tire right here. These are like 5,500 bucks, I think. So it's got a new tire on there. I gotta find the rim. The rim that was welded was this one here. And you really have to look at it real close to see that it had even been welded. And we don't have enough studs in these wheels because we didn't have the, the studs, all of the appropriate number of studs weren't furnished with the tractor. So, uh, we better get to work, right, Bob? Mm -hmm. Enough talking about tractor weights, right? Yeah. yeah. But uh, this tractor is just going to be a little heavier. We'll get into talking about weights. We weighed all of our tractors here um, a couple of weeks ago. We took the bumpers off the scale. And we were able to drive these tractors on the scale with the duels on. So here is the hubs right here. We talked about that, I believe. Yeah, we did. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this left rear dual off first. We're gonna get our hub on there and then we should have enough room to put another weight on that inner wheel. Uh, they claim that you can put, oh, I forget what the math is. The, the starter is the small one they say that you can put a starter along with three thick ones. So three thick ones is 450 times three. That's 15. No, oh, that's 14, three, 1350. 1350 and 450, yeah. That's 1350 plus like two, 200 and something. 13, that's 1550. So uh, we have enough weight to put the one on the other side, and then a thick one and three thin, a thin one and three thick ones on the dual. Uh, being that this rim is a lot wider than what's on the 9410, we'll have enough uh, room to have these weights inside the edge of 
the tire because usually the guys like to grind them down the side of the uh, bunk, don't they, bub? Yeah. All right, well, let's get to work. We'll get a jack underneath there. Uh, we got to make sure we put this, we got to make sure we clock this tire too. Uh, that's another thing that our tire guy made sure of. He made sure to get the bars lined up with each other. That is for airflow for when you're going down the road. You want to get proper cooling um, with the bars in line with each other. If you don't, the tire will get hot and it will prematurely wear out. So you want to make sure you get them clocked with each other. And we'll, of course, have to make sure we do that when we get them back up on now. Okay, so we have the dual off. And I didn't want to speak out of turn because I couldn't remember what I had done here. But um, we're going to put this dual hub extension on. And then that's going to give us room to put one more of these thick weights on. These are 205, yeah, these are 205 kilograms. So they're like 450 pounds. And they say not to put any more than the starter and three of the uh, 205s. So we're gonna be in spec with what the bolts can actually carry. So the first thing we'll do is we'll put our dual hub spacer on there. Now we'll carry our weight in, get that bolted on. Then we can bring the dual back in, bolt that on, and then we'll bring the weights in to put in the dual, which is gonna be, it's gonna be basically the same thing. We're gonna have a starter, which is the small one, and then three fat ones. Bang, bang, and the dual. And then that's going to consume all of our weights. Um, yeah, so let's get bolting, right? Mm -hmm. well, we'll carry that hub over. I'll hold the camera. You can put it up on there. And then we'll get her bolted, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> The short one does the dual. And, uh, yeah, that's what it is. Oh. The ones that you took out. No, the ones that, you, that came off that are in that paint pal. Yeah. All right, so that's what that hub consists of. It doesn't look like it's uh, that beefy, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's the same hub that's on the 9560. Maybe the 9560 is just smaller. <laughs> I don't know. You would think that would break, but it must have enough uh, meat in that web right here i don't know yeah oh well all right so we've got our hub extension on we went ahead and brought all the weights in here with that hub extension on there we're going to be able to put one more 450 on the outside of the inner wheel then we'll bolt our dual on and then we'll be able to put the weights on to the dual itself. To the right, straight out, straight in. Go down a little, down a little, back straight in, down a little. 
Okay, so we'll just carry the tire over, set that into place. Everybody's wondering, why ain't you using a strap, not a chain? You're scratching everything. I don't have a strap long enough. Lift it up higher. And we're just gonna use the chain. Besides the strap, uh, gets injured on the rim, so it'll be all right. It will be okay.
Okay, so we've got that on there. And uh, we're just gonna add the weight now. We're probably gonna have him back up though, and we'll put the valve stem at the top. So if we drop a weight, we don't end up um, breaking that valve stem clean off. So we're gonna go around these bolts is here, tighten them up a little more, and then we'll add on the weight with this uh, other cast weight in there. Yeah, that works mucho good. Got a lot more gappers on there, don't we, boy? Yeah. So, we'll get that down off the jack. Actually, we'll tighten this up first, torque it. Get it down off the jack and uh, get it, um, get the weight on there. So we've got this left rear location done. We added a 450 to the in the outside of the inside. We added three 450s to this outside one and a I don't know what they are, 140s or something like that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do the same procedure to the front end. We'll take this dual off. Put our extension hub on there, and then put the dual back on. Turn the tractor around and do the same thing to the other side. I'm gonna have him pull this forward. So when we take this off, we have our ring up at the top to lift it from. And uh, yeah, so same, well, we're not gonna show too much more because it's all pretty well self-explanatory, isn't it, Bob? Mm -hmm. All right. Giddy up. All right, so we have just finished up this front left wheel. We used the uh, blade frame to 
raise it on up. Now what he's going to do is he's going to back outside, turn around, so that we can work off of working this area of the shop. She's got a little water stance on her. Looking like it's supposed to look like. It was standing 14 foot, six inches, prior to the spacers added. The 9560 is right there on the other side of the road. That sits at 16 foot wide. Boy, it is a beautiful day out today. Raining ever so gently. But yeah, looks a lot better with the spacers on there. This lady is going to get all goofy like. It's right outside. Dock in here. Boom back. Boom back. Alright, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to stop him. Oh, we, oh my god. Oh, we're almost, almost there. We want to get our hook at the top. Guess we're going to do the rear first. Ooh. For just a smidgen. Ooh. What do you think there, Hoss? Ah, yee-haw. She stands a little wider on one side. She lopsided. Yes, I'm... All right. What do you think there, boy? You don't know? It's like wintertime out there, ain't it? It is. April 14th, 13th. Yeah, that's right. All right. Well, you know the procedure, right? Yeah. Some bitch. <laughs> All righty. We have this tractor completely ready to go to the field now. I actually went down to Georgia to look at this tractor back the first part of December. Agreed to buy the thing about the second week in December. Didn't get the tractor until about, I don't know when it was. It was sometime in February. And here we are now just getting it field ready. Ah, uh, there was a discrepancy over them hubs and we've got to get that sorted out because I've got about $3,000 into them. But now we have it setting the way it should. We're gonna take this up and weigh it on the scale. When we got this tractor with a single tires on it, the tractor weighed 41,400 pounds with singles. Weighed some 26,000 pounds on the front axle and the remainder was the uh, rear axle. We'll get, take it up and weigh it, but we've weighed it a couple different times. We know what the blade weighs. Just the blade itself weighs 5,400 pounds. I can't remember what the blade frame weighed. I've got that written down here somewhere. The blade frame of what is solely on the front of this tractor is like 2,500 pounds, if I remember right. Now we went ahead and weighed all of our other tractors too. When we were talking about ballasting a tractor, um, I had some comments here a while ago and we were talking about adding weight to this and working on adding weight to it. I had a couple of concerned folks worrying about adding all this weight. Well, if you don't have the weight, you're not going to get the traction, and it actually takes more horsepower to slip if you're slipping a tire 
than if you keep that tire from slipping. And you also run in the issue of, you can run into the issue of if you're moving at a, you gotta be moving fast enough. If you're moving down around two, three miles an hour and that's all the power you have, and you're tractioned up and you're not slipping your tires, you can hurt a differential. However, if you're spinning these tires fast, you're torquing on the differential because every once in a while, your traction will go from one tire to the other and that's splitting and going back and forth and you could ruin a differential by gaining traction immediately once a tire is spun. So these tractors need to be weighted accordingly. Now we weighed most of our tractors and I'll just reel off some numbers here. For example, a 9410, 410 horsepower tractor, weighs in at 51,860 pounds. That's got a Degelman frame on the front. That tractor's only 410 horse, and that tractor right now weighs more than this tractor did its whole life up to this point. The uh, 9320, about 360? Well, it's about 15. Yeah, 360 horsepower maybe. That tractor weighs in at 43,000. 9560R, that's got a fair amount of weight on it. However, it should have a little more. That weighs in at 547. 8360R, 34,000. 8220, 28,000. 8320, same vintage as this 8220, rolls in at 25. That doesn't have duals on it, doesn't have the front end loaded. Uh, it does have a silage blade on the front of it. But that'll just give you an example of what this iron actually weighs. Now, you can run around with this tractor, uh, 600 and some horse, 500 horse, what have you. You can run around with them pretty light. And if you're not pulling heavy tillage equipment, you'll be okay. When this tractor was brand new, this was the big horse of its era. era. Now, up until the announcement of the newest, newest tractor, the 640, the 9R640, took the place of this tractor. But they just released about six weeks ago, Deer did, they released a couple of new models, 830 horse, 840, something like that. Only on tracks. They can ballast them tractors up around 80,000 pounds. We don't need anything that big around here. This one's probably actually too big uh, for us around here. 500, 560 horse is probably about big enough with the tillage equipment that we have. Uh, terra disc, 33 foot terra disc. Um, until we get a bigger chisel plow, 19 shank chisel plow, the 9560 just plays with that 19 shank chisel plow. So that should answer some questions on why we added this weight. It's still under weight by a little bit. We only have. Uh, weight in the inner part of the front wheels. As heavy as this tractor is on the front end with this blade attachment, I figured that we're not going to bother with adding any more weight to the front end. However, if these tractors weren't meant to have the weight added to them, deer wouldn't allow it. There is a weight bar that we took off of this tractor. It is actually hung from the back of this one because Kaz has been calibrating the, uh, has to calibrate the um, hitch control unit. I don't know what this thing weighs. It's gotta weigh about a thousand pounds. 
Uh, it'll hold, I think, 30 weights. So we're going to be able to put, you could be able to put about 4,000 pounds of weight on the front of this tractor, suitcase weights and what have you. And then a pile of weight on the wheels. Another, oh, I don't know, four or 5,000 there. So that's about 8,000. That wouldn't be four or five. Yeah, it'd be three, 3,000, four, seven. Well, let's just say it's 6,000 pounds. And then we can hang some weight off the back. I think you can hang about 18 suitcase weights off the back. Six, maybe six and six and four, 16. Somewhere around there, 100 pounds a piece. We've got all the weight added. Uh, can't add any more weight than this to the wheels. It's not recommended for uh, what we're using for bolts. So this tractor could take on another seven or 8,000 pounds and it would fall in spec with uh, what deer has it allowed to be able to do. If it was up over that 68,000, if it was closer to 70,000 pounds, that would be more suited for the horsepower. We'll go back to some of these older tractors like a John Deere 4020. Back in them days when I was junior's age, I don't remember that tractor doing much tillage work. Now by the time I was his age, it didn't do any tillage work at all. But when I was four or five years old, they dragged with it, did a little plowing, what have you. Them 4020s are about 90 horse. Do some quick math on that, 90 times 110, 9,000, 10,000 pounds. You put enough weight on them, you get, up, get them up to around 12,000 pounds, now it's a four plow tractor. You run that thing around at 9,000 pounds with a four bottom plow on it, you're just gonna sit there and spin. 4430 was around 15,000 pounds. 4250, 4450 is around 16, I think. Falls in the math numbers, 110 pounds of, of horsepower. So while you roll this on out, pull the front end up on the scale, we'll weigh the front end, then we'll weigh the whole tractor. And then we're gonna jog down the road, we're gonna discuss the reasoning for going with a grouser blade opposed to going with Dagelman. Um, you will notice that this hitch assembly is, is a lot like the frame of a, of a loader, if you will, and it hooks up just as easy as putting, as switching buckets off of a payloader. You just put the frame down, you come in underneath the blade, when, well, we're discussing it now. Come in underneath the blade, you grab your mole board, pull it up in the air, lock your pins, hook your hoses up, you're going. The Dagelman blades, we're gonna run down the road, we're gonna show you them. That takes a little while longer to hook up. I was talking to a neighbor fella, and he says he likes the, the Dagelmans because it, you don't have all this framework on the tractor. Um, it just, it's a little more neater looking. But I'll tell you, it is, they are harder to put on. And this tractor here, and the, the uh, this vintage tractor, tier four, final tier, whatever they call it. If I'm correct, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm almost certain, I am certain. Uh, this frame is the same frame as a 9R 640. Uh, I know a guy that had a 9R, uh, had a 9620R, had a 9620 Dagelman blade on it, took the frame off, put it on his 9R640. The 9560 is a vintage in behind this. That's a tier three. They changed the frame a little bit. 9560, 9410, same, same frame. Uh, this blade frame won't go on those. John Deere did the same thing with like the 30, 
series that was in behind the uh, like the tier three, like the 9410. That was different than the series ahead of it, and it was different than the series behind it, the 9320, for example. That that frame is completely different from the 9410. Even if we wanted to, we wouldn't be able to use the blade that's on the 9320 on the 9410 because the frames are different. Then what Dagelman also did, we can't use the only blade that we can put on that 9410 is one that was designed for the 9410. You can't take a blade that was on a 9320 and hook it up to a frame that is on a 9410. That is completely different. The neighbor over here just a few miles away has, he has a different brand of tractor. He's got Grouser blades. We could go over and use one of his blades or vice versa. We could just take this tractor right over and hook onto it. It's a little more versatile. Another neighbor bought a tractor similar to this one. Has a Grouser blade on a different kind of tractor. He didn't want to buy another silage blade. He just bought a frame, put it on his tractor. If he wants to push silage with that tractor, he just takes the blade off his other one. If we wanted to do that with a 93, uh, 9410, for example, when we bought that, if we wanted to use that on the 9320 blade, we couldn't. If we wanted to buy a blade for the 95, or buy a frame for the 9560, and use the mold board that's on a 9320, we couldn't. So it's, it's backwards. Uh, this, blade, this blade for this tractor was like sixty-two or $3,000. I think the frame is around twenty, twenty-five. dollars So you save yourself $40,000 and you save yourself a headache of not goofing around with, uh, yeah, Mixing and matching, so we jacked long enough, jaw jacked long enough. Let's go up and get this weighed and get this video finished out, right? Yeah. You want to drive it wide, don't you? So we are standing at 16 foot width, uh, same width as the uh, 9560. So we'll get this rolled out the door and we'll. Uh, run up to the scale as he pulls across it and we'll get uh, a final figure on what this thing weighs i'm guessing 64,000, somewhere around there not too awful good with my math <laughs> adding all these goofy numbers up but um was handy to know uh yeah all right looks like we got 60 pounds on the scale so we'll have to deduct 60. we'll let him pull up on here All right, that's just the front end. Just the front end is coming in at 34, 300. I got to put that down in my notes here. 96, 20, 34, 300 on the front end. All right, we'll bring him on the rest of the way. <laughs> He's up on there, all on there. And we are coming in, I was wrong. We're coming in at 61.8. 
Uh, a total of 61,800. So we're at 61.8 and prior to the duels and the blade, it was 41.4. So with duels and weight and the blade frame, we added 20,000 pounds uh, to this tractor. That's hard to believe that it adds up that fast, but the uh, Duels weigh around 1,100 pounds each. And then, I mean, it's not too hard to do the math after that with the uh, iron uh, that is on there. But that uh, looks a lot better. All right, so Jared has this parked up and it has the same width or wheel stance as what this 9560 has. Both sitting on 800 rubber. This has 846s. This has 838s. These tires here actually look wider than those because these are just a little taller, not not by much. I mean, you can just barely tell that there's that much of a difference there. But we got the LSW low sidewall. And um, there's a less uh, rubber from the rim to the top of the tire. Now, another thing that we did not talk about was um, wheel slippage and traction and compaction weight per cubic inch and all that stuff we didn't get into that being that this is sitting on wide rubber the tire manufacturers they'd like to see you have four lugs on the ground four traction bars on the ground the more tire you have on the ground the less compaction you have the more tire you have on the ground the less weight you have to enable you to maintain traction. You take a tire like this that's on the 8360, which we're gonna put new tires on it. They're about, I don't know, 16 inches wide or so. I forget what the actual width of them is. These are about 30. That's gotta be less than 16. We got a lot more weight per, per square inch on this tire than what we do on this one here. You take this smaller tire, we've only got two traction lugs on the ground. Because of the, the diameter, oh no, there's, there's four there. But uh, they went to larger tires, like this has got 50s on the rears, and we've got almost five hitting. Because of the, the larger diameter of the tractor, you're going to have more. Uh, surface area on the ground. That's why guys like or seem to think that you need track tractors less compaction but being that we are on side hills and Whatever like that The track tractors are not the greatest especially pulling one of them things there So we're gonna run down the road. We're gonna look at the silage blade We'll show you the comparisons between the Degelmans that we have and that uh, Grouser. So we had to wait for some traffic to get by here. We're going to run down the road in Andrew's mini truck. This has been a good little truck. Jared has more or less gotten away from his. Uh, he has and was driving his to work every day. He lives about seven miles away. He just ended up buying a pickup truck here a little while ago. He actually bought a Nissan. So what is this, a five-speed? Yep, five-speed. It's got a five-speed Eaton Fuller transmission in it. Uh, it's got high-low on it. And, uh, yeah, it does, uh, does the trick. 
So we've got the silage blades just parked down the road here and we're just going to do a little walk around them just to kind of show you what they all involve. Uh, we've got the, we do have a blade for the 8320 going down below. We've got the blade for the 8320, it goes, um, it'll fit on the 8120 as well. And that blade is a Degelman, but it doesn't lift high enough and it's just, we, we kind of outgrew it um, with the larger chopper and whatever. It, it was just hard to be able to keep up to uh, a tractor of that size. So that blade there goes to the 8320. And then we've got our other blades up here, just in behind this all like trailer. The uh, Grouser, of course, is the black one. And then the Dagglemans are on uh, the other side of it. But we'll get out here quick and we'll show you the comparisons between uh, the three of these blades. They're all different. Uh, this one. When you come up underneath it to hook it up, it's got hooks on it, just like the bucket on the payloader. Just come in underneath it, lift up. Once you get it lifted up into place, pull your locks. Bang. It's locked on the tractor. Pick up your hydraulic coupler here. Your, it's like a faster coupler. Hook that up. You got your hydraulics hooked up. I didn't realize I was going to have to walk this far. This blade that's facing us here, this is a Dagelman pile driver. This blade uh, goes on to 9410. And the first year we had it, I think it went back to Dagelman twice. Maybe the second time it didn't go back to Dagelman, but these wings got hyperextended. And it broke them out. It ripped the welds all off of uh, the panels here. And they had to fix it. They fixed all of this here. And then they put these pieces in. So we had that problem with it. I don't even think they're making this blade anymore. Uh, that one's 16 foot wide. I think this one is 14. I think that one's 14 as well. Well, you can see this hook up here it takes a little bit more to get it onto the tractor you've got to have the height adjusted just right so that the pegs that are on the front of the frame of the tractor get down on there correctly then you've got to hook up your hydraulics you got to goof around sometimes they bend the jacks up while they're trying to get uh, hooked up to it and then you raise it and this part here will come up into the locking me mechanism then you lock it and you're good to go remove your jacks screw around all your hoses and so on oh we got a pair of vice grips huh yeah, you need a pair of vice grips for yeah and then this one here goes to the uh 9320 completely different hookup uh yeah basically the same thing got to get over the top of it just right you got to make sure that you know when you take this off well they haven't gotten that jack on correctly both jacks are bent um if the hydraulics leak down a little bit this this whole thing will go down and then you have to get squared back up to it raise it up jack it up uh, usually guys are trying to put this on when we're five minutes away from chopping it's 90 degrees out everybody's frustrated and um it just does not it does not uh make for a happy day i see we've got a bolt out of this pin here and this blade needs a little work so that'll give you guys an idea of what we're working with here and i think i've jaw jacked long enough and that is going to do it for this video we've got a pile of truck tires here that we would like to have a guy come and cut the sidewalls out of them 
we've been saving them so that's why they're there all right folks take it easy and we will catch it the next one thanks for watching